Hey everybody, it's Carl from LunchboxSessions.com. Happy Friday, this is a little bit of uh, bonus material. And uh, if you were with us a few weeks ago, I think it was around April 28th when we did an hour long live, hour and a half long live broadcast on pilot controllers. If you'll remember, we had uh, joysticks and we had the foot pedals for running the track on an excavator. And I had this all set up to go and we just didn't have time to cover it. So I thought I'd just give a short uh, uh, little bit of uh, tutorial on the brake pedal valve that's typical. Where do you find this? Well, you guys know you find this inside a front end loader, um, a grader, um, a mining haul truck, that type of a, a piece of equipment for hydraulic brakes. And in fact, this particular one, I'm quite sure, was from a particular um, Caterpillar model, a front end loader, as I recall. And what you probably just noticed a moment ago when I had the hydraulic system running, that as I leaned on the brake pedal, the, the harder I leaned on the brake pedal, the more the pressure came up on the two outlets. The two outlets would be for the front brakes and another outlet for the back brakes. There's actually two separate valves in there and uh, while, they, while they're tensioned up together by one action from the operator's foot on the brake pedal, they're actually separate valves so that they can maintain just the right conditions of brake pressure separately for the front brakes and say the back brakes on a piece of equipment. Um, the, the return to tank hose is around the back here, you don't see that one, and these two hoses on the front are, uh, these two hoses on the front are, are for the uh, uh, are for the pump pressure and so you're all set to go there with your pump pressure from the front and um, and two outlets one for the front brakes one for the back brakes and I don't have any hoses going anywhere because as you guys know this is really not a flow application right it's just about sending out the right pressure to give you the right amount of braking force more if you need it less if you don't need to stop quite so quick it's not really a flow application as you guys know the discs in the disc pack and a grader, front end loader, those discs are, are only, uh, oh, they're almost touching. And so it's just a matter of getting those discs to push together and give you that braking action inside the disc pack. And so there really isn't any travel. There really shouldn't be much unless those brake discs are really worn out. So you don't really need much flow to go in there. There's already hydraulic oil in there. It's just a matter of pressuring it up just so. So really this too is just another one of the many variations on pressure reducing valves. Here, let's work on one that I've got right here on the, on the bench for a few minutes. Exactly the same model. Um, and uh, it's basically two separate valves in one. And I'll just take it apart and we'll, we'll have a look at one of the two. They, they work together in tandem. One spool from the upper half is pushing on the spool in the bottom half. And when you're pushing on the top half, you're not actually moving the spool. The spool down here doesn't move on the basis of that. You're tensioning a spring. That's all that's happening up here under the rubber cap is springs are being compressed and that's it. So now the question is, you know, what makes the what makes the valve go? Well, here, I'll take out the bottom spool and let's have a look here. I've just got to remember what every port uh, arrangement is here that I've got going on. Okay, so tank is there. All right, so if we set this up the way it was installed, Installed in there just a moment to go. Just going to check my references. Yeah, okay, the highest ports are the tank, so I've got that right. So if this spool is sitting in there, and here's the outlet to say my rear brakes, and you can see it's damped down. It's got a pretty small orifice in there. It's not meant to pass much flow. And this is my, my pressure source coming in from, uh, from pressure compensated pump. And this spool is in there. And if the operator tensions the, uh, the springs with the brake pedal at the top, putting on a little more brake force, this spool dips down and grabs a little bit more of the pressure available from the supply, the, the brake accumulators most likely. And dips down and shoots that out the line to the brakes, which, which really don't have anywhere to travel. So very quickly you'll build up a higher pressure. Well, we gotta get the spring out of the bottom here too. Dump that spring out, so there it is. So right away that's gonna send higher pressure on the outlet and 
and then, then the trick is to close up again and block, block off that, that inlet from the accumulators and pump. And so how is that done? Well, do you see that tiny little hole? Oh, oh, that's small, that's such a tiny little, doesn't take much contamination to plug that thing. So that's right down, that's not available here at the top, but that does pass through to the bottom, to the spring chamber, and that outlet pressure now acts on all the surface area at the bottom and inside, and a bias from the spring as well to push closed again until, until the operator decides to put a little bit it more pedal force uh, and because he wants to stop even faster and tensions the top springs which would make this dip down a bit and grab a little more pressure from uh, the accumulators and then close up again with that balance act where the outlet pressure travels through the bore center of the spool together with the bias action and closes up until the operator pushes even harder yet and decides he's got to stop just now so that's really it's not terribly much more complicated than that in terms of the pieces inside. Clearly the machining has to be laid out very clever and carefully, but that's it in essence. And yeah, very tiny little hole there. If I, if I blow on that, that's uh, kind of crazy, right? If I blow on that, I can feel, yeah, there's air coming out of that little hole, and boy, is that a small little control passage, right? So if you're having a look here at the symbol on screen here, I'll just get the camera to come in a bit closer. If you're looking at the symbol on screen, it's got bars on either side of the proportional valve, and uh, that you know that lets you know that there's something infinite about it. And you see a double, uh, double solid line between two valve sections there, letting you know that there's some kind of mechanical linkage. That was the two spools touching together, being activated at the same time. So that's that means mechanical link. Well, this whole symbol is a little complicated for a lot of people to look at and understand but in essence it's a three port valve you've got pump in you've got tank return and you've got outlet to a brake disc pack and yeah you know a bit of a tricky symbol and it's kind of drawn out almost so that it looks like it's some kind of a, um, a, a flow a directional and flow valve It's definitely directional I guess but it's really not about flow here let's have another let's have a look at another example this is not from uh, from a caterpillar equipment this is from another manufacturer and so slightly different symbol there and so what you'll notice again is that it's drawn a little bit like a directional valve this is the symbol for the brake pedal there and every time we tension that spring from the top what you see is a little pop down action a little pop down action grabs some more pressure from P1 here the the brake pump and accumulators or P2 and pops it through and over to a shuttle valve and then over here to the disc pack here's our depiction of uh, of breaking piston and and discs in a disc pack but as you know that it's not a it's not some big cylinder with a 12 inch stroker no it's it's just a piston everything's all packed pretty close together right and then as we take pressure off watch the symbols again as I take pressure off it's got to bounce the other way now in little pops and this valve can't spend any uh, any particular amount of time open right you get that if this valve spends any time in one or the other positions you're either going all the way to zero pressure or you're going all the way to full so it's a fight between those springs and it's just little pop open pop shut moments and you know that's kind of all I've got for you today but I just wanted to let you know that uh, on Tuesday May 26th, so that's only a few days away from now, four days away from now, we'll have our, mix, our next major uh, uh, lunchbox sessions live, and it's going to be all about piston pumps. We're going to be making some adjustments to, to the maximum volume stop. We'll be making adjustments to a pressure compensator, and so you can see I've got some of my favorite pumps out, and we'll have a number of them running live. So looking forward to having you with us on Tuesday, May the 26th, for lunchbox sessions live and it's Friday so have some fun and stay safe with your hydraulics. This is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.